Hi guys, today we're going to be working on this reciprocal gradient and I got my inspiration for this design from two very talented bloggers. The first one is Wacky Lacky and her pink version for Valentine's Day I saw on Barrielle's Facebook page and then when I checked out her blog post her inspiration had actually come from Globe and Nail who did this in a very cool shades of gray and actually gave it the name of the reciprocal gradient. So if you'd like to check out those, the blog posts are linked right down in the information box. And if you'd like to see how I did my version in purple, just stay tuned. So I thought I'd start today's tutorial just after I've applied my base coat. Um, today I'm using Orly Bonder because they've been out of my normal gripper the last couple times I went to Sally's. And for those of you that are noticing, my nails are a little shorter. I did do a trim just a few days ago. And if you'd like to see some pictures of that, I have before and afters on my Facebook page. So for the gradient, I'm going to be using three colors. The darkest color is Zoya Pinta. The lightest color, I'm actually using this white, which is Zoya Purity. And then they're going to blend in the middle into Zoya Malia. And so that's what I'm going to use as my base color. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one coat of that to all of my nails. And I think because this particular tutorial does have kind of a lot of steps and is going to be long enough on its own. I'm going to skip the fast forwarding. I'm just going to show you a couple nails for each step and then complete the rest off camera. So I'm going to finish the rest of my nails and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got both hands painted with Malia and I gave that just about five or ten minutes so it's dry to the touch. And I also went ahead and taped up my fingers. That's just going to make the cleanup process a little bit easier. So now I'm going to go ahead and start sponging. And there's about four different ways you can sponge just off the top of my head. And the way that I choose is usually based on randomness or based on my mood when I do a manicure. Uh, for this one, I am doing them all on the sponge at the same time. And then I'm just going to... Actually, maybe I'll do this nail. It'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see. I'm going to go ahead and start applying that on the nail. And you can see as that gets a little bit on my cuticle, why the tape is going to make the cleanup easier. Um... And by blending them on the sponge, you kind of automatically start to build up a gradient from the darker purple into the lavender and then into the white. There actually probably won't be much white on my nail when I'm finished because I'd like to keep it more in purple tones. But I'm just going to build up a couple coats across all my nails. I might stick in just a little bit of fast forward here just on my ring finger so that you guys can see as that gets built up. And then I'll be back. So the next step, once you have your gradient complete, is going to be to let it dry completely. And how long that takes can vary depending on the number of coats that you had to do. Um, I thought this was going to take three, but it only ended up taking two. And to speed it up even more, I'm going to top it with a layer of Sesh Feet, which is a fast drying top coat. And you just want that to be completely dry for when you apply the tape so that the tape doesn't pull up your base color. But you can also see as the Sesh Feet smooths out that finish what this would look like if you just wanted to wear it on its own as a gradient. And you can certainly do that. But I'm going to finish off both hands and while that's drying I'm also going to go ahead and cut my pieces of tape. So I'm going to need about three for each finger. That's another thing that's up to you depending on how wide you want your stripes to be. Okay, my nails are completely dry so that I can apply the tape without fear of pulling up my base color. 
Um, I did actually buy some striping tape since the last time I've done some taping, so I just took and cut some little strips and stuck them on this little uh, wheel of rhinestones. And how you apply the tape is up to you. Every time I do tape, I kind of get frustrated. It's like if I use my fingers, I wish I'd used a tweezer. If I use a tweezer, I'm like, is this really worth all this messing around and hassle? But you just want to start applying the tape. Get it on there as straight as you can. Like I said, if you want to try and get them all kind of uh, equally spaced, you can. Mine are going to be a little bit uneven, but still parallel. I'm doing one kind of pretty much right up the middle, and then one on each side if I can grab another piece. I've got it like tangled on the tweezers here, which like I said makes me wonder if they're worth the hassle, but it gets stuck even worse to my finger. So I'm going to place this one here, and I'm going to continue that on the rest of my nails until they're all striped with tape. So I've got the striping all applied on both hands. I've been doing my right as I've been doing my left. And now I'm gonna go back into sponging, except instead of having the lightest on the tip and the darkest at the base, I'm going to reverse it and have the darkest at the tip and the lightest at the base. So that's kind of where the magic happens by reversing the colors. And since my other sponge is pretty much dried out, I just grabbed another sponge. I've got like a whole bag of these from CVS. So I've got plenty to spare. And I didn't really mention before, but as you're applying this white, make sure your brush is clean before you stick it back into the bottle or you're gonna end up with, you know, lavender polish by the time you're done. So, I'm just going to uh, start out sponging again with the darkest at the tip and the lightest more down toward the base. And again, this is probably gonna take a couple of coats. That'll depend on exactly what polish you're using. But I'm just going to keep applying it to the sponge and do a couple layers on each nail until it's built up to the color that I want. And then I will be back and we'll get to the fun part of actually removing the tape. You can see I've completed one layer of sponging and I'm starting on my last layer. Uh, I've already applied it and taken off the tape on the pinky nail. And now I'm going to go ahead and move on to my ring finger so that you guys can see that. And, you know, sponging can take some time and patience and some experimenting. Not all colors are going to sponge equally well. You know, if you are using a color that's very sheer, you're going to need more layers to build up the color. But with a little bit of patience, I really like the way that it turns out. And so I'm just going to finish blending these colors onto my ring finger. Make sure to get down near to the cuticle and at the sides. And then I'm gonna grab my tweezer and just grab each strip of tape and peel it off. And I did my experiment a while ago showing that you get cleaner lines if you remove the tape while the polish is still wet. And there you can almost see the final design. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of my nails and then I'm gonna come back and remove the tape around the nails. Okay, I finished off my left hand and I thought I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape around my nails because that'll make it easier to finish off my right hand. And again, if you want some more details on this, I'll refer you to my taping tutorial. I'll include a link. I've already cut the undersides, so now I'm just going to uh, grab on with my tweezer and kind of pull it off around the edge. And 
there you can see just a comparison between that nail that I pulled off the tape and all the other ones, how much cleanup that's going to save you. So it's optional, but it will save time, even though it does make it a little bit more awkward while you're working. Well, I was going to show you guys the cleanup, and then I decided, you know, that's what the tips and tricks playlist is for, is to shorten up things. There's a cleanup tutorial in there, and I'll also include a direct annotation and a direct link in the information box if you need some more details on how to do that. But once you're all cleaned up, you can go ahead and finish with some top coat. And you can see that just smooths everything out really nice and will also help to even out the finish so that if you have any, you know, lumps or ridges from the tape that that gets all smoothed out. And yeah, that's that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'd like to uh, say thank you again to Wacky Lacky as well as Globe and Nails for introducing me to this design. And this is also the start of my scheduled programming. So going forward, you guys can expect at least one tutorial a week from me. And that guaranteed upload is going to be on Sundays at about noon central time. So something for you guys to look forward to. That's not to say that there may not be some extra videos during the week if I do have time. But Sunday is going to be kind of the go-to day. So there's just a little comparison. You guys can see a uh, top coat on the left hand, no top coat on the right. For sure, let me know what you guys think of this down in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.